For more than 70 years, they have sat at the bottom of the sea, all their secrets kept deep with them. But thanks to an underwater exploration team led by uh, the Nautilus, we're getting a chance to see the wreckage of some sunken World War II era vessels. Look at that. Beautiful pictures. Uh, two of the ships they're exploring, the Robert E. Lee, a 1940s passenger steamship, and this German U-boat. It sank with all hands lost in 1942 after its crew torpedoed the Robert E. Lee. Both ships now sit about 1,500 meters down. Expeditions, logistics, Specialist Christine Dennison joins me now. It's good to see you. It's good to see it's you. It's been a long Thank time. You. All right, so listen, this is, uh, they discovered this, what, in, in 2001, but the right. teams have finally been able to, to do what? To, to get a closer look? How did they get down there to find all of this? Well, they're working with the two ROVs, the Hercules and the Argus. And, and what these machines are capable of doing is going down very deep. They're going down to depths of 13,000, 16,000 feet. Oh, wow. so, so they really have an opportunity to get up close and see what's going on at that depth. And, and this is, in my opinion, what, what Bob Ballard, who, who's heading up this expedition, does best, is he can bring an audience to the site and share it, which I think is, is a great thing for everybody. It's fascinating to look at the pictures and, and you know, begs the question, what makes, you know, shipwrecks so popular, a popular deep sea habitat? It's because it, it, it's beautiful like this to look mm -hmm. at. Well, it is. It gives you an idea of there is a lot of life down there. There's also a lot of, of garbage at the, on the sea floor, but there's a lot of life, marine life. And marine life, they, they obviously they take it on and they make it their own, right? It's they a, do. It's amazing. Go on. Um, no, there's also the, the tremendous challenge of, of trying to reach these depths and being able to bring to light, you know, we have the technology. The, the problem is that a lot of this technology is funded privately, so that is not really shared with the public. What this expedition is allowing is for people to really see in, in real time and live time what's going on down there, what this looks like. Uh, when there's loss of life, it's, it's, a, it's a graveyard, and that's also, as as, as bittersweet as that is to define that, um, I know I, I worked on the discovery of the R-12 that has 42 men on it. It's, it's a very um, solemn place, and, and at depth, it's dark and it's eerie. And yet, we're, what we're seeing is that, that it isn't such a terribly dark and dank place. I've often it's wondered alive. what is the difference, like what makes the decision to either raise them or to leave them there. Well, according to the Navy, that is their final resting place. When you have uh, submariners that are lost at sea, that is the tradition it's that right. they are there to remain there. That is their final resting place. So it should be undisturbed. What we're doing in, in this case and in most cases is, is you can get cameras with these ROVs very close to the site, hovering over it, getting all these images, yeah. giving them back up to the control center and sharing them sharing them with us. And, and as you see, they, there is something very eerie but very beautiful about them as well. It is very beautiful, and, you, it, and to see the life that you know, there's a, that lot it, of, a lot of sea life down there, and just you know, isn't there's that corals, beautiful? There, there's a lot of marine life that I'm sure, because yeah. they're working live, you might see a large pelagic come into view. I could so. look at it all day. Thank you, Christine Dennison. <laughs>